I'm Coda. And I'm Angela. This is Iggy the House Truck. We've been full time two years in Iggy and three years on the road. We're on the great Tecolote Beach, just outside of La Paz, Baja, California, sir. We've been on this beach for a little over a week now. It's one of our favorite spots down here. The water's great, nice and shallow and warm, not many waves, and there's a bar at the end of it. I've always been kind of traveling with either work or with climbing. I was a climber for a really long time, so I've lived in a lot of different vehicles and I've kind of always just been a little bit nomadic. I was working up in Alaska in the summers and she was living in Bend, Oregon, where we both lived. And I said, I never want to spend another cold winter again so we can move to California, Florida, or Hawaii. And he chose Hawaii and then I started doing all the paperwork for it and looking for jobs and two months later he called me and said, I think we should just buy a van and drive to Baja. And so that's what we did. And we've been on the road full time since then. Basically, we afford this lifestyle by we work about 10 weeks a year in Alaska in the fishing industry. That affords us to travel the rest of the time. This is Iggy the house truck. He is a 2001 F-350 with a 7.3 liter diesel engine, four wheel drive dually. I originally paid $8,000 for the truck before the build out. The build out was originally budgeted at $18,000, so that's kind of where we quit counting. If we had to really do an actual estimation of it, I would say we're probably about $24,000 to $25,000 into it over the span of, yeah, two and a half, three years. Iggy started his life as a work truck up on the north slope of Alaska. They use a Grumman Olsen refrigerator box up there because you can heat it. It has an inch and a half of spray foam all the way around it. I welded up all the racks, all the roof rack, did the bumper, the, you know, everything that makes it pretty. Iron cross bumper, 13,000 pound winch, which is just barely enough for this guy. We got solar panels on the cab over, and I got two more up top for a total of 450 watts of solar. Then I powered two six volt golf cart batteries with it, uh, 400 amp hours. Cut the door in, the stairs. I don't remember where we got these guys, Amazon, I'm sure. But these are a game changer here versus the ladder that a lot of the other overlander big rigs use. Got the boxes all around for extra storage. The ARV touring awning is the six foot one. So I think it's like the 150 or the 1500. They use millimeters. That's key. Definitely a game changer there. You can have it out in any windstorm that we've encountered so far and no damage. This is our water fill. We fill two tanks on the inside. I have two 15 gallon tanks, one on each side. And if you include my hot water and our other storage capacity, we have about 33 gallons of, of water on board when we're full. If we're down here and we're thrifty, we can stretch it to you know a week and a half, two weeks. If we have easy access to water, we can run through it a lot quicker. Coming on around the back here, we run a propane heater and a propane stove inside. This is pretty much the simplest system I could come up with. It's just bolted to the bumper but it makes it easy to fill this guy up and take it in and out. Very important is our RV map of the places we've been and the places we haven't, I guess, is even more important. This is my bike rack here that I made and I have the one up bicycle racks on there. Super easy to slap your bike in and out of these guys. Put it up there, close it up, done. Works great for fat tire bikes. So we have Rad Rover Power Bikes. They're pretty new to us. They have about 60 miles on them but they're big fat tired electric bikes, 20 miles an hour top speed, super fun. Really cool riding around towns down here in Mexico. Open this guy up here. And then you can access the garage here. In the garage is where all of our water is. This is where our batteries are. Most importantly, tool storage, because down here you tend to break a lot of stuff. Just living this life, you tend to break a lot of stuff and fishing poles and spear fishing gear, also pretty key down here. Ton of room in there for me, ton of storage. Angela always tries to put stuff down there, but I try to keep it on the, on the minimum for sure. We got Max Tracks, super key. This is our hot water shower set up here. Water comes out right here on the pressure side of our pump. And so I've got cold here, I've got hot here. It goes up and it goes through a copper coil it's inside of a black box with a plexiglass lid. And you basically just have a hot water outdoor shower. Hot water outdoors, or any water outdoors, is really nice on a rig like this. Where you got the salt water, you come in, you can rinse off your fishing poles, rinse off your feet, uh, rinse off all your gear, and take a quick shower. It actually gets too hot. 
That's why you have to, I have a little mixing valve here. And then I've got a dump here so I can dump it all when we go back up north to the frigid freezing condition. So this guy's pretty cool. This is a vent that goes up and in and there's an inline fan in it. Uh, it's a bilge fan for a sailboat. And if it's raining outside or if we're somewhere where we don't want to leave the windows open per se, I can run that guy and it takes the air from the coolest spot, which is underneath the truck, and blows it in. So I can have the fan running without the windows open, but I still have airflow running through this guy. So that's pretty, that's definitely one of the lessons that we've learned in all this is like, you have to have your airflow and you have to get it from the right spots. You don't want it through your sunny windows. You want to be able to close those up and still have good flow coming around. I cut this window in here. It's always scary cutting holes into your, into your house truck, but that window was given to us. So that was super cool because I'm really cheap and probably would have bought something a lot cheaper than that guy. This is actually a gray water storage right here. The water comes straight down from the sink right into this guy and I can pull it out and dump it. And then this is 10 extra gallons of diesel fuel. Uh, it's pretty handy to have down here. Diesel's a little bit harder to find. Also driving through Canada, it can save your ass. Hello, welcome to the inside of our house truck. So we have 96 square feet in here. So the dimensions here are eight feet across, 12 feet long, eight feet tall. So tons of headroom, which allows for a lot of storage. I actually use a step stool to reach the ceiling. Uh, fantastic fan. I can barely reach it. This is a door that Coda built. It was one of our bigger challenges. It's actually the second door. Um, the first one had a metal skin on the outside. It would warp with the heat, so it didn't shut very well. So this is the second version. Nice porthole window, it's kind of fun. High top table with an Ikea chair that folds up. We can easily sit three people here if you're not huge. Um, this lifts up, we keep laundry in here. We call it the office. There's a little shelf in here that we keep paperwork on. <laughs> I love having a fixed bed. It's been really key to traveling and being able to not have to make a bed every day. This is a kind of a hiding cupboard. <laughs> Coda calls it the chip cupboard because chips take up so much space. These awesome blankets here from Our Open Road, uh, two of my greatest inspirations for the van life. They've been traveling for a long time doing this. Back up here in the bed, we have, um, we have a couple extra feet on each side because we have the headboard here and at the end, we have a bookshelf down here. Uh, and then mostly just room for the cat to play around. We keep this up here because he seems to like it. I never meant to keep it out all the time. He sleeps in here. We have a big screen TV, super fun. We lay in bed and watch Netflix series all the time. We actually download programs to our phone while, we're, while we have good service or Wi-Fi. And then we just have an HDMI cable that plugs right into it. And this is our fan. I think Coda showed you from the outside. So that blows across the... Uh, across the bed and we can turn it on right here. There's a switch under here. It's a little bit loud, but um, worth it, yeah. And we have an inverter here, which I use to make bulletproof coffees in the morning, mostly, um, and to plug in the TV. Of course, that's all we use it for. Uh, tons of storage underneath the bed. We use big rubber totes for all of our clothes. So the top is all clothes, some toiletries, Underneath we have shoes and gear, and one is usually for, full of all the canned salmon that we bring back from Alaska. The Berkey water filter on the counter. Uh, the cupboards are the only thing I think in here that Coda didn't build. Home Depot cupboards, they've held up. I was a little scared at first that they were, <laughs> you know, getting the latching system to keep things stable when we're, we use gear ties for a lot of things. While we're rolling down the road, that's been really key. Over here we have the truck fridge. It's a 12 volt fridge. I like it because it's, you know, vertical versus the Dometic slide out coolers. I find this so much more convenient. Um, and we have a small freezer in here. It also runs on 110 if we're plugged into shore power. Marine pump, running water. It's a little loud. I mean, you know, but we didn't know, like, it doesn't really matter. We don't have hot water hooked up. Let's see, I grew some grass for my kitty cat because we're in the desert and he likes grass. It's a propane stove. Um, don't have a switch, so we use the 
the spark lighter. Super easy. Um, two burner, you know, boom. From Home Depot, we got these super handy shades. They work good. This is our new solar controller. We had a Windy Nation up until two days ago. It died, so we had to go into La Paz and this was the only one that was available. Here we have a little bit more storage. Um, Koto is really excited about building a spot to keep <laughs> extra beer that doesn't fit in the fridge, so it kind of slides through. One of the really best features was crucial to us was to cut a hole so we have a pass-through into the cab um, for the cat and for safety. You know, we can both squeeze through there if we had to, so um, I love having that. And one of the best features is actually when we're rolling down the road and things start rattling back here, we can just close it and it's like peace and quiet. <laughs> we don't worry about it. We can't hear it. This was actually built specifically for a litter box because we had a cat and we built the box. So the litter is tucked away in there. This is our propane stove. It's a wave three, I think. We've only used it three or four times. Works great. We decided to use milk crates because we had them. <laughs> So we built the boxes around the milk crate. Seasonal work or find a way to work remotely, I think is kind of key because you just can't save up enough money to sustain it. I mean, I guess some people can and some people do. You know, you look at these people who've lived in their rigs for four or five years, you know, with kids and they don't work, but they, they, they come from a different background than, than we do. But yeah, I think either seasonal work and getting on a seasonal circuit which there's a ton of, like a ton, no matter your skill set, you can always find seasonal work. For me, it was, I kept moving from place to place for work. And when I finally decided, like, I wanna go somewhere because I wanna live there, then I was able to make it happen. So I might not have known that I wanted to work in the fishing industry until I was like, I really wanna go to Alaska this year. And I got into it. Figuring out, you know, what you want, where you wanna be, and then hopefully going from there. But the reason I live my life the way I do is because like live intentionally. You know, it doesn't matter what you do, but don't just succumb to the circumstances around you because that's where you grew up. You know, don't take a job just because those are the only jobs available. Intentional decisions, I think, is, is what gives me the freedom to, to feel confident. The choices that you make, not the circumstances that happen to you. It's my kind of philosophy on life. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks to all the patrons who support the channel. It's very much appreciated. And if you want to hear more about our stories and our travels, give us a follow at Unfurling Adventurous on Instagram or on my blog at unfurlingadventurous.com. Thanks. Peace.